How do you find options for free TV and are they really worth watching? Is it even possible to get free TV programming that isn't boring and doesn't put you to sleep? In this video, we'll cover the five main ways to actually get the television signal into your home, the advantages and disadvantages of each, and then we'll share with you our top five free TV streaming services and what we like about each of them. But if you don't know us, I'm Hope. I'm Larry. And this is Under the Median, where every week we talk about practical frugality. Hope and I used to have Netflix and we watched a lot of it, but now we don't. And you know what? We don't really mm -hmm. miss it. We found some other things to watch that are free. But before you even look for those free TV options, you have to figure out how you're going to receive the TV signal, how you're going to get it into your home and to your television set. There are five main options when it comes to this. First on the list is smart TV. Now, if you own a TV that's say less than 15 years old, it's probably a smart television. They've been out quite a while now. And a smart TV has many advantages and some disadvantages. We're gonna talk about both. The main advantages of smart television is that it puts the streaming services at your fingertips and you don't need additional streaming devices in order to pick up these signals. Now, smart televisions also offer something called TV Plus. These are additional channels that are already preloaded onto your smart TV and they're channels 1000 and up. The advantage of this is you do get some extra content. The disadvantage is the fact that some of it is I don't know. Kind of substandard. <laughs> kind of subpar. And also the disadvantage is the fact that these TV Plus channels are live TV, which means either you're there to watch the program on time or unless you have the ability to record that TV program, you're going to miss it. The other disadvantage is it's a little overwhelming. There are so many of the TV Plus channels. And unless you're making like a written list of the channels you want to get back to, sometimes it's awfully hard to go back through all of those channels and find the one that you really thought that you would enjoy and it might take you quite a while to get back to it. An advantage to smart TV is that the apps for streaming services are either preloaded or you can add them later. Some of these streaming apps include things like Tubi TV or Sling TV. Or Pluto or Freebie. And a lot of these may not be installed if you have an older smart television, but you can install them. There's ways to putting those on. We just recently did that with our set. If you're unfamiliar with some of those streaming services, make sure you stick with us because remember, we're going to give you our top five current favorites. Now let's say you don't have a smart TV, but you wanna make it smart. If you wanna purchase a Blu-ray player, there are some models out there that have Wi-Fi available for them. So once you have Wi-Fi hooked up, then you can put the streaming services onto your Blu-ray device and then watch them through that device onto your television set. A third method of receiving the TV signals involves your computer or even your smartphone. You can actually hook up your smartphone or your computer directly to your television set using an HDMI cable, or you can wirelessly cast the signal from your computer or your phone to the television set, and we have done both of those things. The next form of getting TV signals into your television set is the old fashioned tried and true method of using one of these. Yes, the good old TV <laughs> antenna. It's not out of vogue in 2023. There are still lots of broadcasting going on, lots of channels, even more now than ever before because of the digital sub channels that main channels now have. You can usually get three to five additional sub channels with any main channel. So there are so many options for watching off of an antenna. Some of the advantages of using an antenna include the fact that you're not going through Wi-Fi. So you are not dependent on that signal in order to get the television stations. One of the disadvantages, however, is the fact that antennas tend to be affected by atmospheric conditions, like including bad weather. Yeah. And you'll find that you don't get the reception that you generally do get. Of course, the main advantage to off-air or antenna television is that once you've purchased your antenna and installed it, you're done. You don't have to put out any more money 
you are just you can just sit and watch free television that comes to you from the broadcast stations. If you're unfamiliar with antennas, we're going to run through a couple of basic kinds of TV antennas. We have used antennas for television reception for over 40 years. We'll tell you the two main different types of antennas you might want to look at, and we'll give you some tips for what you should do if you feel like you've tried antenna TV and said, it majorly flopped, it won't work for me, I'm not going to use it. We'll tell you why that may have been the case and what you might be able to do to actually fix that problem. To demonstrate what Hope was just talking about, we're going to show you two antennas that were sent to us by Antop. One is an indoor-outdoor antenna, and the other one is predominantly an outdoor antenna. Both have different ways of receiving the stations. One is a little bit more powerful than the other. The other is smaller than the first antenna. So there's different advantages and disadvantages to types of antennas you can purchase. And if you're interested in more information about the antennas, our affiliate links will be in the description of the video. So Larry sort of alluded to it, two different kinds of antennas. The first one is an indoor antenna. Now, if you rent, this is probably going to be what you'll want to use, or if you simply don't want to mount an antenna outdoors on your home, you'll want an indoor antenna. There are inherently some advantages and some disadvantages with indoor antennas. This one is the AT, dash 400 BV antenna from Antop. It's designed to be an indoor and outdoor antenna. It is fairly large in size, but this is a very receptive antenna and it has a built-in amplifier so it boosts the signals from the antenna as they go into your television set. If you use it indoor, you can plan on getting mostly your local TV signals. But if you have this outdoors, it rocks. I was able to receive stations from 85 plus miles away, which is what it's rated to. This is the MeTV Network, seen locally on KLJB's MeTV Quad Cities. MeTV is memorable entertainment television. And I actually was getting 40 television stations with this antenna mounted just on our porch. So I was very impressed with the antenna. Indoors, we got just the, the main local channels where the broadcast towers are about eight or nine miles from our house. With indoor antennas, you really are looking at the objective being to receive local stations. You need to be within about a 20 mile radius of that television station to effectively use an indoor antenna. Now with an indoor antenna, you're gonna be a little bit limited depending on the location of it in your home. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have an apartment and it's located in the basement. It's gonna be a little more difficult to get television signals from underground. Mm -hmm. You might have to put that up in a window in order to get reception. You wanna make sure there's not a lot of obstruction between the antenna and the broadcast towers. So if you're in an apartment building and most of the building is in between your antenna and the towers, then it's gonna have a little more difficulty receiving those signals. But if you're on the right side of it, put that in a window or just experiment with different locations in the room where you can get reception from that antenna. Chances are you're gonna find a sweet spot where it really pulls in the stations. Speaking of finding that sweet spot, putting that indoor antenna near a window is always super helpful. And you would be amazed at the difference that just moving it a few inches one way or a few inches the other way will make to that reception. So if you're one of those people that's feeling like tried it and it didn't work, try some of these tips and strategies before you hang up your hat and say, we're not going to use an indoor antenna at all. When we were renting our first home, I had a little indoor antenna like the one I just showed and we were trying to get a station from 35 miles away because it had some of our favorite programs on it. I had it aimed at that station and it wouldn't pull the signals in because it was going all the way through our house in order to get them. But when I aimed it outside the window, there was a home next door that had aluminum siding and that acted as a reflector, reflected the television signals and I was able to get that station in crystal clear with it. So do experiment, it's amazing what what you can do to find those signals. One of the things that most people don't realize about television signals is that they are line 
of sight, which means that they're not going to go in and around and through obstructions very well. Now we were showing you the Antop antenna, which is rated for indoor and outdoor, but Antop makes a lot of different other antennas that are designed for indoors that take up a lot less real estate. So you can get a small flat antenna that you literally can put up in your window. It'll take up a lot less space. The second kind of antenna is the outdoor antenna. And Larry rocks at this, guys. He has been using <laughs> outdoor antennas since he was a teenager in high school and mounted one on the roof without his parents' knowledge. <laughs> well, of course, I grew up in the days when all we had was off-air television. And my dad put up an outdoor antenna because it got solid signals all the time. It was very reliable. Outdoor antennas are your best option. There's several different ways you can mount an outdoor antenna. They can be mounted to a chimney. They can be mounted to a freestanding pole. There's all kinds of different ways. You can go online and kind of check some of these out. The advantage of an outdoor antenna is it's going to be higher and it'll be a lot better for your line of sight receiving. This is where I was able to get the 85 mile range out of this Antop antenna. I was just so amazed. Crystal clear signals. And you will get a ton, I mean a plethora of channels by mounting your antenna outside. Now, let's say that you live in an RV. So your home is literally going to be moving from one geographic region to another or you're a dweller in an area that is geographically dense. So a lot of people live there. And then you also have a lot of local TV stations that are available. But what you lack in both of these scenarios is space to mount a permanent large outdoor antenna. You might wanna look at something like this antenna. This is called the UFO model antenna from Antop for obvious reasons. It is a short range antenna. It's designed to get stations locally from 35 to 40 miles away. We mounted it on the corner of our porch to see what kind of reception we got. And we did indeed get all of our local channels in crystal clear. But wait, that's not all. There's one more way. And this is a really popular way in order to get TV signals into your home, and that is with streaming devices. There are two basic streaming devices that you can buy for your television, and that would be the Roku or the Amazon Fire Stick. Mm -hmm. And both of these require a receiver along with them. The receivers go from anywhere from $30 to $100. They come with their own remote controls, so mm -hmm. you can control them while sitting in your nice, comfortable sofa. <laughs> But these will allow you to get all of the streaming services if you have an older television that does not have these built in. The Roku and Amazon Fire Stick allows you to get streaming services that will allow for free and paid subscriptions. Mm -hmm. And for those who are interested in watching sports and you don't want to give up your cable, there are literally scores of options now on streaming services to watch your favorite sporting event. All right, you have the TV signal coming into your home now using one of those five methods that we just talked about. But the question is, what are you gonna watch? Let's talk about TV streaming services. The most important thing about the ones we'll talk about is that they are free. free. Before we get started, some of these services offer both free and paid services. So you wanna make sure that you're going for the free side if you're not wanting to pay. Another disadvantage is that you'll be watching older series and the series may not be complete. So if there are eight seasons, you may only find one or two of those seasons on these free streaming services. I always look before I start because I don't want to wind up with some of the characters that I have come to like emotionally connect with in a really bad situation at the end of one of the seasons. And I don't know what happened to them. Here are our top five favorites. Of course, our very first is YouTube. And since you're watching this, you're quite familiar <laughs> with YouTube. There are just hundreds and hundreds, thousands of hours of programming on YouTube. Every, everything from product reviews mm -hmm. to how-to videos uh, to, to even old movies and old television series, all on YouTube. And some of these you can pay for. Most of it, however, is free with commercial content. And you even have channels that tell you every week how to spend less and save more. 
If this video is providing you with valuable content, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and make sure that you're subscribed to Under the Median. Our second free streaming service, by all means, is Tubi. Now, we've been watching Tubi for quite a while, and we're very impressed, not only with the content, but with the quality of the design of the site itself. It has some nice features. For instance, once you sign in to Tubi and you're watching a series, like we like to watch Columbo, uh, it will save your place not only in the show, if you're interrupted in the middle of a show, but it saves you what series you're on and what actual program you're watching. So when you come on the next time with it, you take right off from where you left off. What we really liked about Tubi TV was the fact that we were very accustomed to the interface of Netflix. And it was very, very similar, very familiar. So if you're going from one of those paid services like Disney Plus or Netflix or Amazon Prime, and you're used to that really nice, really sleek looking setup on the television screen, you'll find that Tubi TV is very, very similar in the way that they are hooked up. Tubi TV is owned by Fox TV and they have a lot of programming to offer. They actually have 45,000 movies and television shows at your fingertips. Fingertips. And one of the things that I like about it, even though there are commercials, it gives you a little countdown timer in the upper left-hand part of the screen, and it shows you how much time is left on that commercial break. So you can go and you can make your s'mores or your popcorn <laughs> or whatever snack you want. You know exactly how much time you have to get back there and continue watching your show. We should point out that with all of these free TV streaming services, there are ads included. But with some of them, the ads occur less often throughout your program, so you get fewer interruptions. And it feels to us like those commercial breaks are actually shorter. And Tubi TV is one of those that has fewer commercial breaks and they seem shorter to us. Free TV option number three. And by the way, we are giving you our top five favorites in no specific order. However, this one happens to be our second favorite. <laughs> there you go. Having said that, this is Pluto TV, and it is owned by Viacom. Now, Viacom is a major producer of television and movies. Pluto has both live and on-demand television programming. Mm -hmm. And so does Tubi. We should point that out. It also has live television programming with a lot of different channels that have specific uh, schedules set. Most of the content on Pluto is retro content. They have a lot of really good older movies and older TV shows. And frankly, for Hope and I, we're just really enjoying the content. Now, having said that, the big disadvantage with Pluto is the fact that their interface and the way you have to navigate through things is far clunkier than that of Tubi TV. And it won't hold your spot in the series, so you're going to have to take note on which program you were watching and which series you were on. Number four is Sling TV. Now, we really don't have a lot of experience with this one. There is a free version of Sling TV. Most of it is paid programming, but they do offer thousands of movies and different titles. So you might take a look into that service. One of the advantages of Sling TV is the fact that there's no registration required, unlike some of the other free TV streaming services. Uh, we've played around a little bit with Sling TV. We watched a few things off of it. It's enough to make our top five list, guys, but uh, you just have to be aware that you're going to be limited in what you can watch for free on Sling. The next free service kind of took us by surprise. This is an Amazon service. You do not have to be hooked up to Amazon Prime in order to get it. And this is called Freevee. There, there's a lot of programming on Freevee. We were amazed to look at the content, good quality uh, shows that they offer. So I would definitely recommend checking into that. And if you're thinking of cutting cable, our suggestion to you would be check out these free services see if what they have to offer will replace what you're paying for and if so cut your cable and go for it if you're unfamiliar with freebie it may be because you know it under its original name it was launched in 2019 as imdv and recently it was rebranded in april of 2022 and it came back out again as Freebie. We took a little look-see at it and we're actually super impressed 
with what Freevee has to offer. Once again, it has that interface that will be very, very familiar to those of you who have maybe Amazon Prime. It's going to look very, very similar to that. Freevee has original programming and it is requirement to be registered to that. Most of them you should register to. For instance, Tubi, if you registered, that's how it saves your place. It recognizes who you are. Pluto TV also requires registration. Now we told you toward the beginning of the program that we're gonna give you our top five favorites. We know that there are other free TV streaming services out there that we have not mentioned. If we missed your favorite, tell us about it in the comments section. And who knows, Larry and I may actually discover a new free favorite TV streaming service. Dumping paid TV and turning to free TV is just one example of how you can save money. If you want to look at 35 different ways to save money in one week, Hope and I did a video on it and it's right over there.